YouTube, once again, we're talking college sports in the Deep South, where college football is king and in the South as well. The battle cry is War Eagle. We would like to think that the SEC conference is the best conference in all of college football. Very competitive, uh, full of championships, full of players in the NFL. We also want to think the SEC West is highly competitive as well. Want to get the comment section going this morning. A couple of days away from the NFL draft and a lot of uh, student athletes will be fulfilling their aspirations to play football at the professional level. Um, when we look at the Auburn Tigers, though, chances are there will not be an Auburn Tiger that will be drafted in the first round. And that is quite unfortunate because if you look at it, Auburn has only had four players drafted in the first round in the last 10 years. As a matter of fact, that's tied with what Auburn was able to accomplish back in 2004 when Auburn had four players that were in the first round uh, of the NFL draft. Included in that first round back in 2004 is current uh, running backs coach Carnell Williams. And when you think about this, you know, with the NFL draft stock of Auburn players, that has to have a profound effect on the recruiting sales pitch. You know, it's, it's kind of a hard sell uh, to an elite player that will get you in the league when most of your averages, your high end uh, football players are drafted, say, in the second round or worse. You look at a guy like Carl Lawson with excellent talent and abilities drafted in the fourth round. Excellent abilities out of Carrion Johnson drafted in the second round. Carlton Davis, I would like to think, is a fairly, you know, pretty close to elite cornerback drafted in the second round. You know, that's a trend that Auburn is definitely going to have to change to, you know, in, in order to have a different perception on the recruiting trail. Also, when you think about competition in the SEC, you look at just as a small sample, you look at Alabama, who have obviously been able to produce some of the best recruiting classes. Also, um, you know, funneling that in with uh, multiple national championships over the years. And then you look at in the last 10 years, Alabama has been able to produce 25 first round draft picks as far as uh, football players goes. Sandwiched in between that, a couple of uh, Heisman Trophy winners. So when you look at that, you know, you start to kind of get a visual picture as to where the separation comes between, say, uh, Auburn and Alabama, because, you know, football players come into uh, out of high school into college with aspirations to play pro ball, especially when you talk about the power five athlete. You know, it's, it's just a it becomes a bit of a disappointment when players are having to perform, you know, in, in an elite fashion at, say, a pro day or have to utilize the sugar. I mean, not the sugar bowl, but the senior bowl to kind of up their draft stock when this draft stock should have already been, you know, already solidified because you have teams like Alabama who really don't even have to put their guys in you know, pro days per se or uh, senior bowls because their stock has already been uh, solidified. And also when you look at this, you know, I think Auburn had missed some opportunities to gain somewhat of an elite status in college football. You know, you look at uh, between 2010 and 2013, two national champ championship appearances, uh, being able to uh, get that win in 2013 would have been huge as far as national perception as Auburn as a champion would have been a lot better sell for recruiting. Hey, we've got two national championships in the last three years, so you can actually show someone how this is possible. But now you go from that to, you know, multiple eight and five seasons, 10 and four uh, with the prospect of getting into the college playoff. But, you know, when you look to the 2019 season, you have to think, that now Auburn has to absolutely execute. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, Gus Malzahn has to win a certain amount of games to retain his employment at Auburn because, you know, truth be told, 
there is still a hefty buyout on the table. But at the same time, Auburn has to find a way perception wise to get to a more elite kind of status as it relates to performance on the football field. Having these guys perform at the level of their capability, because when you look at guys that are uh, coming along now, Bo Nix, Joey Gatewood, Court Sandberg, Malik Willis, all of those guys are pretty good. You know, you also look at the running back position with Booby Whitlow, Cam Martin and now DJ Williams. Sean Shivers, all of these guys are good. Sal Canella is a good football player. You know, these things, th- these items need to be corrected to get these guys in a position to where, you know, you have more upper second round, um, upper first round players. Now, mind you, there's a lot, there is a lot of talent in college football, especially in the Deep South, when you look at the recruiting classes of the SEC this year. Uh, very elite a lot of great teams texas a&m with the number four uh recruiting well the number six no number four recruiting class in the country you talk about georgia and alabama at number one and two respectively and then you have auburn who just missed the top 10 i think george pickens you pick up a guy like george pickens you're easy six or seven so looking forward auburn has to have this in mind if the elite status will be claimed until then you know you're going to continue to have second third round even fifth round players and that's just going to make a hard sell uh during the recruiting process but best wishes to all the tigers who will uh be vying for an nfl draft uh spot best wishes to them want to put themselves in a uh, find a great financial situation and fulfill their dreams to play pro ball. Once again, it's Case Studio Goat for Vernon Speak Sports. Go ahead and uh, like this video, comment to the video, and subscribe to my channel, War Eagle.